Hey, what's up and welcome. I am Matthew Msingati, the designer and developer. This is my YouTube channel, Code Design, where I teach coding and user interface design. In this video, we are just going to take a look at fetching data from an API in Next.js. So this is a sample of a page that we are going to create in a way. As you can see, this is nothing much but um, pictures of dogs. So when you click in a picture like this, or when you click in this button specifically, okay, it takes you to a different page. As you can see, here is that page. It takes you to a written page where you will see the image uh, of that dog. And also we can say uh, the file path or the, 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 the file name of the image, okay? As you can see so when you go back as you can see you are on home so um, this picture we are going to fetch it from an API so meaning that these pictures are not pictures which are in my computer they are in a server we are going to use this uh, I believe it's a free API okay dog.ceo okay so this is the the API that we are going to use to to fetch the pictures that we want these pictures and then we will display them here so in terms of styling we will we will keep the old project which is this one open on uh, a new visual studio window so that when we want to style the the project we can just copy and paste css styling without like losing focus or deviating from the core uh, what can I say uh, main aim of this video which is we want to explore fetching data okay so this is the old code as you can see it's running on uh, localhost 3000 this is where it's running at the moment this means that we have to stop it so that we can um, some sort of kickstart the new project so that it can also run on local uh, host 3000 so now at the moment it's running so how can I stop that? You go here on your terminal and then you press Control C. It will ask you to type Y and then press Enter. Okay. And then now if we refresh. Okay. As you can see, now it's no longer available. That will mean then we have to create our new project. Okay. So let's just go to this new tab. Okay, we will, we will keep this one open just for copy and paste if you want to copy something that relates to styling specifically. Okay, and then from here, uh, let's open a folder. Okay, open a folder. Um, let's go to Coded Design. Coded Design, YouTube Tutorials. And then we already got uh, a folder there, which is fetch data. Okay, let's open this folder. Please ignore this audio recording. Okay, it's not going to affect the, 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 the process. Okay. So now we are inside um, audio recording. Okay, I think this might... Um, do, 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 do. this might disturb me okay this might disturb me these files here might disturb me okay so let's just open and go back to youtube tutorials let's just create a new folder okay let's say let's say fetch uh next js okay this is the new folder fetch next js okay let's open this new folder rather Okay, as you can see, now it's clean. There is nothing here or confusing uh, folders, okay? So what we are going to do now, we need to create a Next.js application. How do we do that? You go to a terminal, new terminal, okay? So you must always uh, take note of where you are currently because uh, it's very important when you are running command. If you are running a command from a wrong folder, you will always get an error, okay? So for instance, now we are here at the folder that we have created. So in that folder, we are going to create a Next.js app. So how do we do that? Okay, we type this command npx, uh, npx create next dash app okay some people will have at latest 
also that one will work but for me i will just keep it uh simple like this npx create next app let's double check yes okay so what will happen uh you will see um as we continue this folder will be populated by something okay so now it's asking what is the name of your project so we just have to give uh, a name to our project whatever name that we put here it's going to be inside a folder here okay what is more important about um, a project name in Next.js? It must not contain capital letters. So let's say this one is, um, can we just call it dog pictures? Okay, without, without capital letters, dog picture. So when I click enter here, I want you to take a look at inside this folder. At the moment, it's empty. As you can see, there is nothing, but now, I want you to observe as we uh, press enter. Okay, as we continue, you must check here. Okay, so would we like to use TypeScript? Of course, we, we want to use TypeScript. The reason why we're going to use TypeScript, we want to write a better code. Um, we want to catch errors um, as they continue. And also we want to exercise as early as possible to write a clean and also highly maintainable code. Ls lint yes tailwind css of course yes uh, src directory no app router yes alias um let me just say yes and yeah yes okay as you can see now dog pictures here is the folder if you click on that folder you can see that here are the files that are being created uh, for us so what i'm going to do now I'm just going to pause the video and wait for this to finish and then I will come back when this is done. I don't want to take much of your time unnecessarily. So let me quickly do that. I will see you now. Okay, guys, we are back as you can see. Okay, the system is uh, finished. As you can see now, we've got a new folder, dog pictures, and inside that folder, we've got a lot of files here, okay? So um, I would like you not to stress much about these files. It's nothing to write a story about. I think the important folder for now, it's this one, the app folder, okay? Um, I've just realized that maybe you might be new in web development and also Next.js and React, okay? So in order for you to be able to run these command, you must first install Node.js, okay? Node.js enables you to run those command. It's more like um, a, a virtual server that runs in your machine in order to execute um, JavaScript modern web application or files. It acts like um, web server in PHP. When you want to run PHP locally in your machine, you install a piece of software called web server or XAMPP. Okay. And then also you can have a code editor of your choice, but in my case, I'm using Visual Studio Code. Okay. The framework that we are using here, it's um, React, but there is also another um, framework built on top of React, which is Next.js. So I decided to give you some sort of an overall understanding in case you are new and also to know what uh, some sort of things that you are supposed to already installed. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so now we are here. This is our new project and this is our old project. So obviously we will copy the code, uh, copy and paste code from the old project to the new project, more especially uh, the, the styling part of it, which is um, Tailwind CSS, okay? <laughs> So now, remember I told you, you must always take note of this path, meaning that now we are on the parent folder. The parent folder, it's fetch next JS, which is this one. So if we can run any command here in terms of running the project inside, we are going to get an error. So it means that in order for us to run the command that have got something to do with the actual application, we need to be in this folder. How do we do that? 
you type cd and type this name as it is dog pictures pictures okay and then you press enter now as you can see now you are no longer here you are in fetch next js but dog pictures and then from here the first thing that we must do let's just run the project and see what's there so you use this command npm run dev okay uh, we just have to wait a little bit and then we can go to our browser at uh, localhost 2000 we can just click enter here we just have to wait a little bit and see what's there boom as you can see this is your next.js project so if you have reached this stage congratulations that means you are going somewhere okay so this is the some sort of a default page for next.js <coughs> sorry about that so now let's go ahead and delete everything here including the styles so that we can have a blank page how do you do that okay let me explain a little bit about uh next.js folder based routing okay so in in next.js there is this app folder which is uh, it acts like some sort of as a main folder okay so if we go to localhost 3000 it means that we are visiting this folder sorry for that we are visiting this folder particularly we are visiting what this page okay that means we're getting to this page what if maybe we wanted another route maybe let's say uh, sorry maybe let's say about us okay let me just make a quick example a demo of this about us how were we going to create it so that you can have an idea of folder based routing okay meaning that um, next.js uses the folder names rather than the actual files okay let's see let's see sorry for that okay what we can do can we maybe close this for now and we will open it when we need it <clears throat> okay and then so if we want to create about us page it's uh, as, as simple as this we are going to go here and create a folder we name that folder about okay and then inside that folder we create the same page similar to this one dot tsx the reason why we've got dot tsx here is because we are using typescript maybe if you are using javascript it's going to be jsx okay and that's it and then here i'm just going to use a shortcut to quickly write a some sort of a boilerplate or a code snippet okay which is is going to be rfce uh, as you can see i've quickly wrote few lines of code without even uh typing them why are we getting this this is possible because of an extension let's go to visual studio code extension um it's called redox you will see here uh react redox let me say react redox okay i only know it when i see it this one yes seven react redox code snippet so you install this and then it will enable you to have this shortcut so let's say this page was home okay and then when we go to this folder now okay as you can see we've got home here okay so that's how next uh js uh routes based on folders so let's just quickly delete that because we don't need it <clears throat> and then what we want to do we want to go to this page we want to delete everything here and then from then we are going to use that shortcut rfce okay and then from then um let's give this page for now let's just say this is home let's say and then when we go back obviously that we've deleted the about page and then that means we will just have to go to the home as you can see here is our home as you can see we've got these uh, stripes here or this uh, styling that we don't want how do we remove that 
we go to global styles and we go to the body and we delete everything that is inside here and then we go back as you can see now our page is clean our page is clean and um, we can uh, continue okay so what we are going to do here this is going to be a home page remember uh, this home page has um, those pictures of the the dogs and that button so now we are going to create that okay the way in which we are going to create it we are not going to write everything in this page okay we are not going to write everything in this page what we are going to do we are going to create uh, a component and that component will fetch the data the pictures the images from the api and it will some sort of loop through the data that we get take each page and then display it and then when it's done with that it will send all that information to the main page okay um this technique is called code splitting where you split your code into different fragments for reusability let's say the piece piece of code excuse me the piece of code that we are going to write we want to use it the component that we are going to create now we want to use it somewhere else then it means that we can be able to use it somewhere else it's not going to be part of the main page treat the main page as a dashboard so meaning that it consists of other fragments it is not those fragments so if we can take the the, the, the component that we are going to create and embed it in this page that means now our code it's more like it's uh it's not loosely coupled it's tightly coupled of which that's not right your code needs to be loosely coupled with that being said let's create a folder here called components okay we are going to create that um we are going to create that uh, do we create it inside i think we create it outside the app folder okay the components folder it's outside the app folder okay let's just make sure we are in here and then we create a folder called components okay okay now we will create a component okay how do you create a component you just create a file here uh, let's call this component um dog images okay dog images okay dot tsx okay obviously as you can see that this component it's not in this folder let's call this as a root folder so meaning that we cannot go here and then expect dog images to load here because it's not a page in a way it's a component it's some sort of a piece of code or a fragment that will be embedded in a page so it is not a page but a part of a page okay so that's why you are not going to see it somewhere here okay so we are done creating the file uh where is it uh, components okay we are done creating the the file then we are going to use uh that shortcut rfce if we don't want to use that shortcut we can even type this um and say function okay uh function dog images let me start with a capital letter dog images Okay, this is a normal uh, JavaScript function, dog images. And then we just make sure that this function returns, okay, returns an HTML-like code, which is called TSX or mainly it's JSX, okay, which is it's the mixture of JavaScript and HTML, okay. Okay, and then let's have here an HTML tag which is going to be called um, what can we say dog no, sorry dog images component okay and then from then once you are done with that you need to export this function okay uh, meaning that you can here you can export default this function okay that means you have exported this function okay this
component is not a page but a part of the page so let's go to the page and make that component a part of the page so that it can be displayed here okay so we are going to do that by importing uh, sorry import import the name i think i already got it import dog images from okay let's use this at forward slash components okay forward slash dog images so that means now we have imported that uh code snippet or that component we're importing in a page it is not a page but a part of a page so then how do we display it here um let's just remove this home here and then take this tab as it is sorry open bracket paste and then let's make it a self-closing tab like this okay now we are supposed to see dog image component so whatever we do here on this component which is uh add more okay it will always show here as add more okay i hope you do get um the idea of code splitting okay now i think we are going to get into the essence of um the video which is now inside this component okay inside this component we need to fetch uh, the data from the api we need to loop through the data and then once we are done with that we need to push that data to the main page okay now let the fun begin okay the other thing that you must know about Next.js, it's um, these uh, two different rendering techniques, okay? The server-side rendering and the client-side rendering. What is rendering? Remember, I spoke of a syntax which is an HTML-like syntax, a mix of JavaScript and an HTML. So that is JSX. Obviously, the browser, as you can see here, okay? even though we are having this return and whatever and function those things are non-existent here you don't see them here this is pure html so your browser understands pure html as you can see we've got the head okay uh, we've got uh, the head and we've got the body and then in the body we've got an h1 as you can see here you don't see the jsx but what you see here it's um pure it's pure html so there must be some sort of a conversion from jsx to pure html right and that conversion is called rendering at some point there must be an engine that will be responsible or a group of instruction that will be responsible for converting a jsx into html and that process it's called rendering next js comes into the mix um to make this type of rent these two type of rendering easy and simple to use hence next js has a server side rendering and a client side rendering okay sorry about that so next js has got a server side and a client side rendering how do you know if something is going to be <coughs> rendered on the client and how do you know if something is going to be rendered on a client in next.js okay in next.js every page that you create it's a server side uh, uh, page which is going to be rendered on the server side because of the help of the node.js node.js enables uh, us to run a javascript code in a server something that we are something that didn't exist before in 1990s or before node.js was uh, invented or created so we only ran javascript on the browser so now because we've got that capability that means we can render we can change we can convert this jsx on a server and next.js is capitalizing on that okay what are the advantage of doing that remember a server it's more like a bigger computer it's a bigger machine sitting out there united states or wherever south africa or nigeria it doesn't matter but what is important it's a big computer it's have got it's fast and it has got the capability of quickly rendering the or converting the jsx into um 
pure HTML as compared to my computer. Imagine, let's say I'm using a very old computer and a very old browser. That will mean if we can ship that unrendered code to my browser, that means the performance of the application will be affected because we are going to push a lot of code, heavy code that my browser needs to process. Whereas if this was already processed in a server, then it was just going to be passed to my browser, my Chrome, just to be displayed. So I hope you get the idea of server side and client side. So what are the instances? If then server side looks that good and promising, meaning that meaning that you render something on a server and thus ship it to the client to make the life easier and it improve the performance. What are the cases that you might use the client side? React by default, it uses some sort of a client side rendering. So that means it takes everything that it has. Yes, it has some features of rendering um, on a server, but it doesn't capitalize on that. So it pushes everything, the whole entire app, on a browser and then in the browser it will then uh, some sort of redo the client side rendering and the app is there okay so enough about that i hope you get the idea okay so how do you know if something it's a client side or a server side every page that you have it's a server side okay up until you put this use client then you are telling the next JS uh, system or engine that this is going to be a a client uh, site. So next JS favors server side rendering as much as possible. So that, that's what we are also going to do. <coughs> okay. So in here, we are supposed to have um, what can I say? We are supposed to have a container. Okay. Let's type that we are supposed to have a container okay this container will do what it will hold the images for us okay let's just do a basic styling so that we can see it visually okay this is what i'm doing now i'm using tailwind uh, css instead of actual css for styling the width of this container i want it to be 200 pixels okay and the height of it, I want it also to be 200 pixels. Let's set the background so that we can, so that it can be visible. Let's set the background to this. Okay, so this is both the height and, uh, okay, let's say the width of it. Okay, let's just go to our browser and see. As you can see, here is um, the container. So this container is going to hold the images, okay? Okay, so this container is going to hold the images. Now, let's create the part where we are going to fetch the images. Okay, <clears throat> first, let's go to the API. So this is the interesting part about using an API. Obviously, somebody might think that, okay, what's, what is so important or special about the skill for, what can I say, uh, fetching data from an API. Let me show you what is important. Okay, you are going to be given a requirement. Let's say fetch a certain breed of dogs and display the images for that breed. Okay, but when you go to the documentation, these are called endpoints. You are not going to get into the 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 the, the API and find it easy to just say, okay, here is an endpoint for getting a certain type of breed what does that mean it will mean that based on the specs that you've been given by your manager or whoever your superior you need to go to that uh, api and you need to find out which endpoint am i going to use what type of data is it returning then let me go to my code how can i prepare my code so that it can be ready for that data when it comes to javascript i think you can be careless about what type of data that you are receiving but when it comes to typescript you need to 
let TypeScript be aware of what you are going to receive so that in the future, if you are m messing up with that structure, TypeScript can remind you that you said you are going to receive an ID and a list of dogs. But now you are changing those types from uh, an ID, which is a number, you are changing it to a string. Okay, so now let's go to um, the, the API, okay? And then in this API, what we are looking for, we are looking for an, a, an endpoint that will give us a certain breed of dogs, okay? We don't want a mix of uh, breed of dogs. Why we don't want that? Because in the next page where we are displaying a, uh, the picture of a dog, we want only to go to the same URL and then only change this image name. Okay. So imagine if we are going to, I'm um, not very clued up about the breed of dogs. Imagine if we are going to go to, we are going to fetch breed A of dogs and then we will just substitute this part so that we can get the image that we are looking for. Let's say one, two, three JPEG. And then when you click on another dog, you'll find out that that dog is on breed B. That will mean this code now is no longer relevant because the image that we are looking for now is under breed B, of which that will cause a problem. So hence in this endpoint, we must look for, uh, we must look for an, in this documentation, we must look for an endpoint that will give us a certain type of breed. Okay, for instance, as you can see here, this is the first endpoint. Okay, they are telling you that, okay, you go here, forward slash API, yes, breeds, and then image, and then random. This endpoint only gives you one picture. Let's click here, fetch and see. As you can see, it gives you one picture, meaning that we cannot use this endpoint because it just gives us one picture. What type of data is it going to return? As you can see, it return a JSON object or JSON string. In that JSON string, there is a key message and a value, okay? I think this is the status of your fetch that it was successful. Let's say if there was an error, then here there was going to be an error okay and then let's continue um at least now we understand that we've got an endpoint but this endpoint only returns one file and this is the type of data that it's returning what we know now about the api is that it always has a key called message okay now we are starting to think about our actual code that we are always oh we are always going to use this key called message okay so that we can get the url okay now let's continue let's click here on breed list okay as you can see this is the the api and under breed as you can see this is a certain type of a breed and then image and then random so meaning that you can choose from different type of breeds here okay as you can see, you can choose from different types of breed and then from then you will get what you want. So meaning that this is somewhat close to what we want because it's allowing us to choose a breed. Let's say according to the spec, uh, let me open our um, our old code and then let's just quickly check the which breed uh, did, did I use before. But that's not important. But let's make as if maybe it was mandatory because it was a a spec okay um so let's quickly do that and then we are going to click file open my apologies for that okay dev projects okay i think in next js there is a fetch okay i think this is the project Okay. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 I think I'm looking for file with a component user. Okay. Okay, my apologies for that. Okay, don't mind these things. Okay. This is the component that I'm looking for. Okay. The reason why this component is user, I was going to use a different API. 
the API that was going to return the users for me. Okay, but as time goes by, I got challenges on that API and I ended up using this one. As you can see, now according to the spec, we want um, this breed. Okay, as you can see, this is Hound and this is Afghan. I hope I'm right. So this is what we are looking for. Okay. So let's maybe type here. Okay, let's look for H here just to see if uh, we will win the E F. Da, 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 da. There is no hound here in Afghan. Nothing like that. Okay, that's not that much important. Let's um, go ahead and check here okay let's see okay so so when it comes to uh the, the the api it's not like it's obviously you are just going to to get something obviously uh, i already got this endpoint i already uh, uh, uh got it but then we need to find a way how did i get it like before as you can see that this is breed and then under breed we've got this hound and then this under hound we've got uh this this afghan okay so now we just need to to check on the documentation um where did i go before uh obviously it was uh some time ago so even me i almost now forgot um how i got it okay let's see here api breed list all okay let's see let's see breed list okay breed whatever then images okay maybe da, 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 da. how did i get that one let's go to documentation all breed random breed by breed okay i think by sub breed okay i think this is where i was before Okay, as you can see, yes, this is where I was before. As you can see now, this is the breed and this is the hound. Okay, so this is starting to get to where we want to go. Okay, as you can see, here is the endpoint. Okay, list of all subbreed images. As you can see, breed, hound, Afghan images. So this is what we are looking for. So we have found the endpoint that matches uh, the specs okay that's why in the interview you are going to be asked are you able to use uh, the api they want to know do you have an understanding of what's going on okay and then what we are going to do we are going to copy this okay so what this will return to us it will return this json string with all of these so let's go to our code okay um let's go to our code and see if we are going to get that so point number one is done we have managed to go to the documentation uh, to the api documentation and we've managed to get the actual endpoint that we are looking for now let's um okay let me just paste it here so that i might not forget it or i might not lose it <clears throat> okay so now we have to create a function that will fetch the that will uh that will fetch the images for us okay so here um let's create that function okay so if we are going to create a function that fetches the data from the api the parent function which is this one needs to be an async function okay um let's say um i think a sync we will put it here okay not really sorry about that this function need to be an async function okay this function needs to be an async function what is an async function okay let's um let's talk about this from a point of synchronizing as somebody who has tried um what can i say video editing okay when you are editing videos you always check the visuals against the sound for instance as i'm presenting now maybe it might happen because of some many technical details of recording a screen 
my sound might not exactly exactly match my lips okay that means they might not be in sync so uh, uh, um, sync has got something to do with two things happening at the same time or they are in the same state always okay but now once we talk of a sync we can say the voice and the lips is not matching but here in this context of coding it's what we are looking for okay i hope you you do get that for instance let's say we are calling this function okay this function is going to be an async meaning that the code the entire code the main executing code it's not going to wait for this code to finish but it's going to skip it and do other things this code as an async it might respond later with the data that means you see that idea of not being in synchronization or in sync with the overall entire program so once you you declare a function async you are just saying it might respond later than expected so as soon as you call it don't think that it's going to respond immediately but the opposite of that which is synchronous which is sync it means that when we hit this instruction the entire program will wait until it finishes and then it will continue and execute other uh, uh, other instructions or other code so first of all we are making this function async so that whenever the main module is executing it it knows that it doesn't have to wait for it because what if there, there is no internet so the, it might throw an error it might maybe the internet is slow it might take longer so it can't wait for that so that's why we are putting async here okay and then from there we have to create a function constant okay a result is equal to okay now when we are going to use the fetch uh, uh, method or the fetch api of javascript okay we are not sure as I, as i've told you that an async function might respond later and its response is not um we don't know it up front it's like we don't know it beforehand we might connect to the internet the internet might be broken and then you find out that the response might be uh, negative or it might be an error or we might we might get the data so we use here await okay so here we use await it's like we are going to wait for a response okay and also await is more of a promised based kind of uh, a, a technique okay when we talk of promise in in javascript uh, it just simply means promise as i might promise you that um, i will take you to wherever let's say i will take you to a, a coding boot camp okay meaning that i might some sort of fulfill the promise i might not fulfill the promise okay so this await it's kind of telling us that that as we are fetching we are going to wait for the resolution it might be good and it might be bad and then we start to call the fetch api of javascript and then from then you just open bracket and put the strings and then what do you do you paste your endpoint your api endpoint here and what else and that is it you are done okay and then you are done okay and then after that um we need to what can i say we need to some sort of uh prepare the data okay first of all let's just console log this this data to show you that when it comes to uh web communication okay there is some sort of an information that it's being sent to to the server and also there is an information that we receive to the server that has got nothing to do with what we want okay let's go back here to give you the context what are we looking for we are looking for a json string this is what we are looking for okay but at this point in time here at this point in time here where 
here okay we've got a response yes but we are not sure if it's what we are looking for because remember we are we are communicating through the web so when we are sending something we are thinking in our mind that we are only sending this endpoint whereas the fetch api has got some certain things that it will send to the server that we don't see. And the server, when it's responding, there are some certain things that it's going to respond with a bundle of things that we don't see. For instance, the status, the error message. The day status, is it 404, 303, or 4, or whatever number? What's the error message? Maybe um, the information is not found or this endpoint doesn't exist, whatever. So those things, those are the things that we already got here in this result uh, where I am. Da, 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 I don't think I'm in the right place. Sorry for that. This is my old code. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so those are the results that we have here that means it's a bundle of results it's not exactly the json object okay it's it's a lot of information about what the server said it's like sending a kid to a shop or to someone and then they come back with a message so the message is too long but when i as somebody whom you sent the kid you only want the answer maybe the kid might come back and said he said before you go, you must first do this and that, and then you can take it. When are you are just only looking for that answer? So that's the case. So let's just console log this and understand what are we getting. And also, how are we going to filter it so that we get exactly what we want, okay? At the moment, I told you that this is a server side. This is a server side um component okay meaning that it doesn't run on the client so the console log of a server side function or page doesn't show up here okay if we go here and check for the console log here okay as you can see we don't see much here okay because the console log of a server components doesn't show on the client remember this is the client okay it shows on a server where is the server the server it's us here okay the server it's us here okay whatever that we want to show it might be shown here but not there okay but to make our life easier and also to and make the the tutorial as short as possible let's just say use client here so that whatever that we console log here we can be able to view it here okay so that we can be able to view it here and also here it's going to be better because we are going to see a lot of things so as you can see do you see this response okay let me uh comment it so that we can be sure that this is a result of what we did as you can see now there is no response okay but if i uncomment this okay if i uncomment this we've got a response so wait okay we've got a response here let's look at what this response is doing this response is telling us that we were trying to reach this url okay of course we were trying to to reach it okay we've got a redirected flag here we've got the status 200 it means okay as you can see okay so do you see that this is a lot of things coming from a server we don't want everything from a server that means we are not done yet from here because this structure of data it's not that useful to us for the sake of this tutorial okay it's useful just for you to know at this point in time how to debug to look at what has been sent to you so what we need now inside this bundle of data we need to go to this response again and then check there okay and then in this response let's just go down and see if we are going to get um what can i say the json data 
okay which is the data that we actually want so the point here is that the data that you want it's inside a bundle a package of a lot of things from the server of which we don't want those things as you can see now i am struggling to really find the data that i'm i'm looking for okay because it's somewhere in uh it's somewhere in here okay json length zero redirects okay so let's just uh quickly see if we are going to get it okay and and we saw how it looks like okay it has got a message prototype uh, no it has got uh, a message and a list of urls okay form data clone da, 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 response yes okay let's see for the last time okay these are the headers we don't want the headers this is the prototype i was hoping that is going to be under the prototype json okay we are looking for an array okay in here we are looking for an array okay but if we don't find it that's not a that's not a problem if you look uh close enough you will you will see it it's somewhere here okay but it's such that we have to know where it is actually then in the code that's where we are going to filter everything so that we can get uh we can get exactly what we want instead of uh getting this okay as you can see this is uh, a lot if also we can check it some other time uh, for now let's just uh continue with the with the code okay let's just continue with the code so as you can see that this gives us a lot of things but what is important from this is that the status is 200 that means we did receive the data and the server gives us what we are looking for okay so now what we want to do we want to create another constant we are going to call this constant um, list of images okay it's a list of images and then it is equal to res which is result dot json okay now in that mix of information that we got here remember we waited for the promise and it came back as you can see here sometimes sometimes we see the console log after these things and uh some other time we see it before these things remember it's a promise we are not sure when the server is going to come back to us so that was the reason sometimes you see the data here sometimes you see it before these things okay now what we have done we have filtered the the the, the, the response out of all what we had we've just selected only the json which is this part okay only this part okay and then from there let's console log now list of images okay 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 as you can see here is the promise okay let's go back okay prototype object okay as you can see here is the message okay okay arrays we've got 125 uh, some sort of um, array items as you can see here are the images so now we do get the the images okay let's just quickly look here this is a promise result promises pending promise fulfilled so we get this under promise result and then it's an object and then we get this okay let's just quickly uh, go back and look for this promise result uh, with an object where here when we have res here okay when we have res so we are trying to check if maybe on this response can't we look for okay the status 200 okay inside prototype 
can't we look for those that, that promise with the result okay here is it i think here is it was it promise or prototype let's just quickly check here looks like it's not it okay okay that's not a problem that's not uh something to write a story about a response let's check also here okay i think this is the same thing this is the same thing prototype we're looking for a promise with object okay json okay redirects okay prototype okay i'm so worried why we don't see this but if we don't see it uh prototype object but but it is here okay but it is here but when i've got time i will i will i will look at it and then i will see what i can do okay let's continue guys okay instead of console logging this now we are going to console log okay console log The list of images okay now we've managed to get the the list of images right so um what we want to do now okay we want to involve typescript okay let's first try to use um let's first try to use these this list of images without typescript okay so obviously we are having a json object here that we can loop through it okay so meaning that inside um here inside here we can use um a function okay sorry we can open this okay that means we can use a function called uh dot map okay dot map that means mapping you are looping through the the json file that you've got okay you are looping through it and then uh, as you are looping through it you want to use each and every what can i say each and every item in that json uh, uh, um, uh, file okay so let me just uh, comment this for now da, 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 da. comment this okay and then we are going to receive let's say this is a child and then from then say h1 okay and then on h1 we say child let's say child which is this child which is a child dot okay number one let's just look at this error passing error expected what what okay list of images promise of any okay now type type script is telling us that we are working with a promise and a promise doesn't have a type okay it's like we don't know the structure of the data inside that promise meaning that um TypeScript is confused. Obviously, with uh, JavaScript, JavaScript can continue and and work with that, and you will see it when you are running if there is a problem or there is no problem. But with TypeScript, TypeScript will tell you things before. Okay, so that's the first uh, problem that we are we are getting here. Okay, and then uh, obviously, secondly, we don't get uh, child dot. Okay, so we don't get more what can i say we don't get the message that we were hoping we are going to get here okay and that message is where it's this one okay so with javascript you are not going to encounter this sort of error but with typescript obviously you will okay so now let's introduce uh typescript okay so what typescript does it reinforces the structure meaning that we have went to the api and we have seen the structure that this is the structure of um of the results okay now we need to create some sort of a type or a skeleton of this structure so that 
TypeScript can be aware of uh, this structure. It's like let's build a frame or a container that when we are receiving this type of data, we will fit it into that container. I hope you get the idea. So before we didn't have, but now we are creating it. Okay. So let's create that container. Okay. So let's even do it outside here. So we are going to create an interface. Okay. Let's call this interface. Um, uh, dog image. Dog image structure. Let's call it like this. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The data, the data that we are receiving, it's arranged in such a way that we've got a key, which is message. Okay. It's very important to type things as they are here. Okay. Okay. As they are here, we've got a key which is message okay and then inside that message we've got an array okay and that array it's an array of string okay <clears throat> okay now we've got the structure okay we don't know what type of information that is there. We are not sure. Okay. We are not sure if here there will be a URL or, <clears throat> or here there will be, what can I say? Um, here there will be the names, a list of dogs. We are not sure. But TypeScript wants to know what key am I going to get to receive? The key, it's message. Okay. And then what type of information am I getting inside key? As you can see inside key, uh, sorry for that, inside key, we've got an array, okay? And this, what is inside here, it's a string because we can see with the quotation strings, okay? <clears throat> quotation marks, okay? Now we are done with the template, okay? So then how do we solve this, okay? We are taking this container, okay, this structure. We need to tell, um, we need to tell TypeScript that whatever that we are receiving from here, it's of this structure, okay? Now, let us tell TypeScript like this. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Have I done the right thing? List of images is declared, but its value is never used. Okay, that is still TypeScript. Okay, TypeScript accepts that. Now, the type of this data, okay, it's this type, which is its dog image structure. Okay, but it's just telling us that we have received it, but we have not used it. Okay, when remember, continuing, when we are mapping when we are looping, when we are iterating through an object or through an array, it must be some sort of an array. It must be iterable, okay? That means here we want to loop through, not through this object, but through this one, through this key, because this key equals an array, okay? I hope you got that one. So for now, let's just check if we are on the right direction. Let's console log again. Console.log and then list of images. We are using it now. Okay, this is TypeScript telling us that we've got a variable that we are not using it. So can you see that TypeScript is starting to reinforce good programming practices okay so that you cannot catch errors on production time but you can sorry on runtime but you can catch them on production time while you are busy developing the on 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 development uh, phase okay when you are busy coding <laughs> okay let's paste here 
Okay, property message is missing in type promise any. Okay. Okay. Now, um, okay. Now we have told TypeScript that uh, this data that we are going to receive here has got this structure. Okay. Now let's see what is the problem of TypeScript. Now we have used the variable as we did but still we have an error what that error is property message because this structure has got a property called message okay property message is missing in type promise any between these two this one has got a type what doesn't have a type is the right hand side this one so now when we are assigning this to here TypeScript is telling us that you are assigning a JSON string or object, but it doesn't have this key. Okay. Remember, when we put a wait here, we said we are going to wait for a promise. When you are waiting for somebody, you don't really know, right? You are not sure. You are not certain. Okay. Now, it looks like when we do things like this, we are saying to TypeScript, we are sure that this is going to be a JSON object. And TypeScript is telling us that, no, if you think you are sure, a JSON object doesn't really have this message. So how do we solve that? We need to tell TypeScript that we are also awaiting. We are also awaiting. We are not sure. Okay, but as soon as you receive it, you will have to check if it has this message. We are sure that here we are getting a status of 200 from here. The connection, uh, just ignore the, the errors that you see. Okay, just ignore these errors because we are busy typing. When we were here, we saw that the status is 200, meaning that we can connect to this endpoint and receive the data okay we are sure about that because we have tested it okay now we are saying to typescript that when you get this information you need to await okay the information that we got here is going to be converted okay that means please await for a promise meaning that that conversion will suit here so when we are saying await again here we are telling uh, TypeScript to chillax a little bit. We are waiting for a promise. Okay. Then let's go back and um, console log this list of images. Okay. Let's see what will happen. Okay. Let's see. Do we have any error? Is not yet supported in client. Okay. Not a problem. Now it's Next.js telling us remember. Uh, remember we did this so that we can at least see something here that's what we did okay so that means that we have to remove this client so that this can be a server component okay we have to remove this so that um what else error object are not a valid react child found with keys oh okay i have got a code that i haven't finished writing here i think yes as you can see i'm returning nothing here okay let's just say h1 okay was that the case yes okay by the way i like it when when things go wrong okay if things always go right, obviously that's not my kind of a style. But when things go wrong, that's where I get interested. Remove this and uncomment this. Okay, this code was like this before. Okay, let's go back and check. As you can see, it's exactly like that. Because now this is a server-side component, our console log is not here, okay? Now, where are we going to get it? We are going to get it here. Okay, this is where we are going to get it. Let's just go down, 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 and see. Okay, let me do this first. Uh, control C. Oh, this, I'm not in the console log, sorry. As you can see, I'm in the output. I want the terminal. Okay, this is where I want to be. Sorry for that. Let's go back. As you can see, okay, as you can see, 
we are getting that message here is the message and here is all the information okay and then let's go back and just um temper with uh ba -ba 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 -ba, where do i want to go yeah this is where i want to go and i want to bring this down okay let's go here and mm, 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 is it me okay let me check something here okay i'm looking for the square i'm a little bit lost if i can be honest but i will find myself okay i'm looking for the code that we recently wrote now 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 this one okay this is the code that i'm looking for okay sorry for that okay now to be sure that whatever that we are console logging here it's exactly this one okay let's go back here as you can see the compiler did compile again but it didn't console log this but if we go here and say undo and save as you can see it's compiling and now it's showing us okay so i hope you you get the idea that when you are dealing with um fetching data from the api it's very important to check the api and understand what it's um, what is it bringing back and then from there you can um some sort of match if you are using typescript even if you are using javascript you need to understand am i going to get message dot what or and, and whatever so you need to check the message some sort of the the result or the data that you are going to get so we've we we were here and we did check that this is what we are receiving and then we created a structure or a template telling typescript that this is the type of data that we are going to receive this is the type of data sorry about that this is the type of data that we are going to receive and typescript was happy with everything that we did and typescript allowed us to display this okay and then now let's check if uh, from here can we be able to get message as you can see now we are getting a message let's console log that list of images dot message okay let's see what it will give us now it's giving us the actual uh what can i say the actual items okay that array which is this one okay i'm happy with this okay i'm i'm happy with this meaning that we can be able to get that array now we need to loop through that array let's quickly do that okay let's come here let's comment this for now and then let's open the curly braces let's take what we got here there is no need to, okay we're not console logging anything let's take list of images and in list of images we are looking for dot message why i'm not getting it okay why i'm not getting it why i'm not getting it this is the item that i'm looking for dot message i'm looking for dot message okay let me think uh, why i'm not getting this let me just go back <clears throat> okay okay this is where i am okay copy this okay and then from then okay list of images let me say unto as you can see we have not used it okay you can remove unused variable okay but now when i'm doing this that means i'm using it dot or oh, dot map uh pa, 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 list of images dot map obviously we are not we are not um mapping through a list of images but we are mapping through message okay but my worry is um typescript is not suggesting this maybe it might happen i need to reload let me press uh control shift p and then type here reload i am not sure okay but typescript is supposed to some sort of give me this message here okay but let's say dot map 
okay open and close okay let me just type it as it is i am going to receive an image url image url k image url okay and then i will display that image url h1 open brackets then i will display that image url here okay so if you don't understand please don't mind about that i'm just uh, checking i want to see what might be the problem okay okay first what i'm starting to see here okay whenever we are returning let me just remove these whenever we are returning inside here okay we need to re return a jsx okay one of the rules when you are returning a jsx okay is that there must be an outer container okay this is the first thing that i'm noticing here okay it's either it's going to be a div okay that's not a problem this is a container and the container that you are returning it must only be one container everything must be inside that container you can make a div like this take everything and push it inside here that's not a problem okay or you can make uh, a fragment a react fragment this is a react fragment it's more like an empty div okay as you can see this is a react fragment okay and you take this and you push it inside here okay as you can see now we don't have um as many errors as we used to so what we can do we can go back okay because it's important for us to learn we want a list of item we copy this okay now we did things the right way we are inside a fragment and we are opening the curly braces we are telling the jsx that we are going to write javascript okay we want this dot now as you can see we are getting dot message okay we want to dot map as you can see we can even get the dot map function because typescript is intelligent it's aware that this is an array okay how does it know that remember we told it here that this is going to be an array okay let's just quickly check that and prove okay can we have a dot map in a string only a string save let's go back let's see if we are going to get a dot map on a string as you can see we don't have a dot map on a string but we might have a to string method as you can see okay so this is the beauty of typescript okay save and then in an array we've got a map method okay and then from then we open the brackets okay so that means we are looping through each and every item of the array so we create a function there an anonymous function we are saying in this anonymous function we are going to receive image url okay this is more of a, a variable okay and then we this is an arrow function and then we are going to um create an h1 tag then open the brackets again for a javascript okay and then from then we are going to display that okay what might be the problem okay let's see arrow function okay and that's it uh, how many brackets do i have i only got one okay this is image url let me read the error missing key okay not a problem okay so whenever you some sort of uh, use the map function to loop through an array okay you must always have a value um uh, we must always have a key as a a a, a, a some sort of uh, we must always have a key as a key and a value okay this means that here we need to provide a key okay for now the key that we are going to provide here doesn't really make an impact because in our data here we don't have an image id okay meaning that let's say in this data we had an uh, an image id or dog id and then this dog id has got this image we don't have that we were going to assign that unique id to this key 
but here we don't have that we're just going to type one okay why this key is important okay so in react you when you are rendering a list react need to uniquely identify those items in that list so that it keeps track of the order so that when you reshuffle using an array or you some sort of work around the order of those items then react can know that this was key number five now it has moved to the second position but it knows that it was key number five it was on position number five this is for that that's why this key has to be a unique identifier for now we're just going to be say is equal to one because in our case we don't have a unique identifier here or if we want we can uh, use the key index kind of a thing i think you can use it here and then this index will be some sort of zero one two three it will increment and then we say key is equal to index okay that can also be a quick fix but here we are not doing the actual essence of what this stands for and also in this case it's not important for this tutorial okay let's just go back and see if uh, are we able to see all those urls as you can see okay you can ignore these errors as you can see here are all those urls okay here are all those urls as you can see url number one url number two so what we are going to do now we are going to go to our old uh, user interface we are going to copy um a a a a and some sort of an html there that has already got all the styling and we are just going to in the link image we are just going to substitute uh this and that will be it okay so before we do that let's let's display these on our own the the best way we know how remember we had uh this uh where i am i'm not sure let me close this okay remember we had this okay the other thing that you need to know about um, the this uh, TSX or JSX, this mixer of JavaScript and HTML, you must always return one mother container. So this is not the mother container. So it's not inside this fragment. Okay. So we just have to push it inside. Okay. So what we are going to do here. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, what we are going to do here we are going to okay here where da, 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 where i'm using this okay where i'm using this i'm just going to remove this i'm going to put some brackets because i want to put more code here and then i will paste i've lost my original copy and paste okay sorry about that this is what i'm looking for let me first paste it here there will be some errors let me remove this one because i don't need it up until the h1 let me put uh brackets and then let me add this one here okay okay let's see what is it saying you can collapse mtjsx okay this one is not a problem let's put that key back here key into index that's the first thing we have to do and then i think we are done so what we did instead of having that h1 that displays these things let's uh, run refresh this instead of having that h1 that displays the name now we are having the first box the second box the third box okay according to the number of the images that we have as you can see okay good okay so what we want to do in those image boxes okay um let me just put a gap in between them let me say margin bottom let me just put um five as a gap so that we can separate as you can see now we have separated okay these represents those images but it's such that we we have not assigned the image yet okay let's see okay um now let's use an image tag from next.js okay image 
uh, from Next.js. It's going to be a self-closing tag. Okay. Okay. As you can see, we have not imported this. We go up. Okay. We import. Sorry. We import image from next forward slash image. Okay. Okay, that means we've got, um, let's see what is it saying. Image element must have an alt. Okay, let's do that. Put an alt. Leave it empty. Okay, let's see what it asks for again. It will ask us for the height and what, what, and what, what. Okay, and also the SRC. Okay, for the height of this image, we are going to put fill. What does fill mean? It means that it must fill this container. Okay, as you can see, it's there, but it doesn't have an SRC. It must fill this container. We are not going to put the width and height for this image. So that means it will fill in the container. Okay, and then the most important thing is the SRC. Okay, uh, sorry, the SRC which we have here on this URL. Okay, this URL, we can put it here. Uh, sorry about that. Copy that URL. Okay. So now when we are looping here, we are going to put this image box with this background. Yes, inside it, we are going to have a picture that will fill the entire background. Yes, and then we are going to have as many as uh, they are inside this array okay this url will be substituted here let's just go and check the results okay now next.js is complaining okay this is what next.js does okay let's first read the the error okay invalid src prop blah 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 on next image host name image dot dog dot ceo is not configured under images in your next config okay this is what Next.js does. Next.js, because of this image tag, okay, Next.js wants to know beforehand where are you getting your images. I'm just assuming if Next.js knows where you are going to get your images, Next.js can go to that URL to some sort of prefetch those images, okay, so that Next.js can work on those images because what Next.js does as compared to a normal HTML image tag, it some sort of enhances the image. It converts the image into a small, uh, what can I say? A, uh, it compresses the image into a small, lightweight, um, ready for web image. Okay. So this is my assumption for Next.js wanting us to put a domain where we are going to get our own images. Okay. Next.js wants to know this must be registered. I'm just assuming since Next.js does a lot of optimization in the images so that your images can load faster and whatever. I think it does some sort of a prefetch to prepare itself to quickly get those images, work on them and get them ready when you want to. Please take a note that this is my assumption that why Next.js wants to know. Okay. So what we are going to do, since this is outside the scope of what we are doing, it's Next.js. We are just going to go to the old code and then we are going to go to Next.js config and we are just going to copy and paste. Okay. Because this is um, the Next.js as part. So this is the old code. Where is Next.js config? Is this the old code? Okay, does it have user? Yes. Okay, that means it's an old code and that's it. I'm looking for Next.js config. Let me scroll down. Okay, here is Next.js config. As you can see, here I've got images, uh, remote patterns, I've got protocol and I've got hostname images dot dog dot co. Okay. So what we are going to do, we are just going to copy this as it is. If you can, if you can go 
uh, if you can copy and paste this error that we have here and paste it on the internet you will see an an, an, an a url there to next image documentation telling you to do exactly what we are going to do so we need to go to our new code go to our next js config as you can see we don't have uh this here okay let's just see it uh, sorry just want to see where it was okay inside this uh next config we don't have that here so let's go and paste it okay inside this config we just have to paste this and that's it let's just say dot okay why do we have this now passing error cannot find the module next uh babel okay i never okay my computer is slow okay okay let me first see let me say undo 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 okay it's still saying that even before if i paste this okay let's see what it will do okay is it going to continue or is going to talk about that error okay we will attend that error if maybe it's uh, some sort of preventing us from continuing okay let me go here let me press c yes um npm run dev okay i hope this is yes key index yes okay run dev okay let's run the project again and see okay we will only attend this error if it persists okay what we're going to do we're just going to copy and paste that on google and we get the answer and that is it only if it it matters but if it doesn't matter just like now everything is working then that means we just have to ignore it as you can see we are getting all the images okay maybe the problem that we might uh, have is that um, they are filling the entire screen instead of being contained by that container that's not a problem um, let's go to that container which is this one let's put here relative okay it's like we are forcing this parent container to be a bounding container it sets the boundaries of anything inside it as you can see guys we are having a list of all the dogs okay we're having a list of all the dogs okay for now i'm thinking um there is no need really really to copy the the styles from uh from that code since this is not uh, uh what can i say uh, this is not a tailwind or a styling tutorial okay i think we are happy with this we have done what we said we are going to do we have managed to use this api and hit a certain endpoint and we have managed to get what we have managed to to get the images one last thing when we click on this image what we must do we must go to a certain page and display this image okay now let's go back okay now let's go back and then what we are going to do here obviously we are not going to sort out this error because it's going to take a lot of our time okay let me just quickly pause the video and tell uh, the guys next door to slow down the volume a little bit i'm afraid that you might <laughs> you might hear them okay let me just quickly do that okay guys i'm back again i hope uh, there is nobody talking on the background now okay so what we want to do when we click here okay we must go to a different page let's quickly do that okay what we are going to do we are going to wrap each image in a link tag okay and also that link tag is not the a tag with an href like your normal html but that link tag it's um next js link tag okay so we need to wrap this component or these images in a link tag so that when you click then you can go to a certain page okay and then display this 
image let's quickly do that okay the first thing that we are going to do before that let's just quickly say uh hover when you hover over this image um Kesa pointer yes okay let's quickly see that okay as you can see now this Kesa it's um some sort of a pointer as you can see okay so let's quickly wrap this in a link tag okay so what i'm going to do going to introduce a link tag a link tag here uh not a small letter link tag but a capital letter link tag okay okay we need to import it okay and also it's not on the right place where it is okay import um link from next navigation okay then let's put it inside because we cannot render two element at the same time inside this jsx okay so let this wrap this div okay we're getting an error i hope this is a link error missing what missing key prop oh okay now the parent element which must have a key we are going to remove the key here it's this wrapping element okay and then the link is complaining does not have any constructor of course a link cannot be used as a jx component it's type of uh input what what okay that means um that means can we take this link and put it inside here so that it can wrap the image okay let's do that because it looks like it cannot be used as a jsx uh whatever okay let's see this is a controlling parent and it ends here and then okay this is the mistake here okay why things are not happening the way i want to missing key okay let me give you the key is equal to index okay what are you missing as a link does not have any constructor link cannot be used as type of import code design okay let's go back to my import and see did i import this from the right place import link from link um next navigation maybe is there anything called next link oh, okay okay now i see my mistake we are importing the link from next link okay now suppose it complains about the href okay sorry guys let's go back to the initial plan okay obviously i will explain this confusion okay take this key here sorry about that okay let's just say href equal to empty thing no errors at all okay uh, my first mistake i imported the next link from next navigation which i was supposed to import it from next link okay the good and then from then this is the div that we had before so i'm wrapping this div that we have with a link okay so for now if i say here forward slash all all dogs meaning that when we click in all these pictures they will be expecting to redirect to a page called all dogs okay which doesn't exist at the moment let's refresh okay let's click as you can see you see it's redirecting to a page called all dogs which does not exist which is a problem okay so what we are going to do when we click here okay we need to go to a certain page but this page it's not going to be all dogs okay it's a page that will receive uh that will receive some sort of the image name okay so that it can use that image name to some sort of display it somewhere here okay 
so what i'm going to do i'm going to create that page here okay uh, okay that folder sorry okay that folder the name of that folder is going to be weird okay but i will explain now we need to catch the image name let's say okay we close this bracket okay this folder means that okay it's not going to be all dogs no here there will be dynamic names jpg here there will be dynamic names when you click on a certain image there will be this on another image there will be this on another image there will be this okay this is what it means so meaning that this route okay this is called uh dynamic routes so meaning that we need to capture that number which is here and put it inside what and put it inside this image name okay then we can create a page dot uh, tsx okay create a page dot tsx and then in this page we can say function um let's say oh uh, okay single dog pick okay then we return brackets and then let's just put a div and type here single dog pick at the moment we have this image name here which is supposed to capture everything that is here but at the moment this page doesn't capture that it uh which one where i am okay this page doesn't capture that as you can see it just display single dog pick we want to see if are we going to get to this page first before we capture whatever that is there let's check if um the default export is not a react component in page image okay and then let's say export default single page we need to export this single page okay go back go back okay now when we click any picture okay it doesn't matter what is in here but because of there is something it goes to the single dog page pick okay whatever that is here it will always go here because there is something here but if there is nothing here it goes to the the first the home page as you can see so meaning that now what we want we want to capture what is here okay we want to capture what is here and then always display it here okay okay how are we going to do that we are going to receive let's say params okay params we are doing it the wrong way intentionally we want to introduce typescript and what it does okay let's click here param is declared but its value is never used okay let's say here on params we can say params dot and then we take this name now we are starting to capture okay we want image name okay the image name okay this is not a problem but let's look at here param uh, parameter param implicitly has an any type okay typescript want us to define things want us to give types to things okay let's just run this and see if it's going to work okay go back okay as you can see we don't see anything here okay there is nothing doesn't matter what you type there is nothing so that means this doesn't work let's go back here as you can see we do have something let's say maybe we had something here let's see 
as you can see whatever that we have it's displayed but not what we want not this here okay so typescript is telling us that this type this param this parameter param has got a type of any and that's a problem because when we are saying dot image it means that this is a there is a value okay that we can get from this key okay now in order for us to get that value we need to again create an interface okay create a container to tell nextjs that when we are receiving this param it will have this structure we need to fit it into this container okay let's say param structure okay param has uh params as a um as a key and the data type for that is string okay i think this is fine okay and then from then what we're going to do we are going to put this inside brackets and then we're going to tell typescript that this is a type of params okay my apologies for that params has a key which is image name okay which is supposed to be here uh, ba -ba 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 what am i missing here okay let me go back okay let me go back let me go back let me go back we've got params okay we've got params yes okay inside params we've got a key which is this one okay and this key is of string okay now let's see we've got params the key params okay this is the key param this param it's this one okay but when you say dot on this param you will get image name and that image name it's a string here is that param when you say dot you get the image name and that image name it's a string we have created a structure for for typescript to know that okay this is the template of how param looks like the structure so when we get this param we are going to fit it into this structure so that tomorrow when you want to say dot g whatever i can tell you that this does not exist here okay that's the power of typescript now let's go back if typescript is not uh, yelling at us let's go back and see now as you can see we've got what all dogs here okay let's say we've got one two three four five here okay now as you can see we are starting to get one two three four five progress right okay let's go back okay now what we want to receive here from this image name here it's not one two three four five we want to receive an image for the selected image name so here we don't want all dogs we want the selected image name okay first of all let's just do a quick test okay let's just do a quick test instead of using these let's use this um uh, sorry let's use this this symbol okay and then in this symbol we're going to put a forward and then we're going to put a dollar sign kelly braces and then from then we can type this url as it is okay it doesn't give us what we want it doesn't give us what we want let's do it the other way okay let's go back oh okay now i see now i see first of all let's tell it that we are going to type a javascript okay by opening those uh kelly braces and then we're going to type this character on your keyboard this uh character is next to one okay next to one on the left on the from the numbers on the keyboard next to one okay and then from then we're going to put a forward slash we're going to put an under sorry uh, a dollar sign and then from there we are going to type this image url as it is i just want to give you an idea of what's going on here in each and every image 
the URL for that image will be passed by uh, will be passed here so that when you click here then it will be shown here okay so now we are not going to have those one two three what what we are going to have the image URL this is the image URL for this um, for that dog okay don't mind this okay this is the image URL for that dog okay we don't want the image URL okay as you can see because when we go to that URL it starts with HTTP and whatever and whatever and it confuses our system okay which is our browser okay now we only want what we only want this image name okay now let's do that okay so what we are going to do let's say const image um image name okay is equal to now we want image url the image url we want to slice it okay it's more like we are chopping it okay chopping it into pieces but how are we going to do that starting from where to where okay let's say uh, the start number will be from five and the end number will be 10. okay let's see where we are okay where we are where we are we are inside here so we cannot write this type of a script here okay that's not a problem we can write this type of script directly inside these curly braces okay inside here okay because this is a pure javascript so we are taking the image url we are slicing it starting like slicing it in terms of each and every alphabet starting from five up to 10 let's see what we are going to get there so that we can modify things from there okay okay as you can see now we are getting few alphabets okay as you can see because we are slicing um the url that we get okay as you can see after this forward slash we get this dot and i am okay maybe it's for image whatever okay so let's say starting from zero and then 10 as this okay let's see go back as you can see when we start from zero it starts on http let's see how many characters it gets one two three four five six seven eight nine 10 i think even this it's 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 part of it okay so that means um i think it starts from zero based index so if you put 10 it will start from zero and then it will get nine but i hope you get the idea that we are trying to some sort of uh, slice this url okay 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 so maybe if we can start from one here let's see what will happen we're just experimenting now okay okay it's that it removes the h it start from ttp zero one two three four five six seven okay let's check one two three four five six seven eight okay that's not a problem so what we are going to do here now as we can see that there is a pattern where we can some sort of um some sort of chop the url from a starting point up to the end point okay based on what we know from here based on what we know from here okay based on what we know i don't want this sorry for that this is not what i want based on what we know from here okay we want to skip all this and start here okay after this right after this we want everything after it okay so how are we going to do that let's go back the starting point and two and two okay the starting point from this it must be last index last index of um 
uh, wonder why I don't get uh, last index off. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Now I see. This last index off, it's a string method. Okay. So it doesn't just appear out of the blue. Okay. So that means we need to get a string and then say dot last index off. Okay. Last index off this alphabet okay so this character so meaning that we are looking at this okay we will skip this one we will skip this we will skip this we are going to look at the last one we are going to start from here and then from then we get everything okay so we don't really need to tell the end string so if you don't mention the end string where it should end it takes everything from there let's quickly test that go back okay as you can see now um it's giving us this okay this is the name that it's giving us but um it uh it it has removed this local host because it's suppose it concatenates the name from here let's click again as you can see let's go check the code what might be the problem okay we've got this here okay we've got the image dot slice yes image url dot last index of okay now let's just uh, say plus one here because we don't want to start where this last index start we want to start right after it okay let's just do that and see what will happen this is supposed to work fine we are not supposed to erase um, that local host thing okay let's go back as you can see now we are having local host once we start right after that we are starting to get this name which is this is the name so the last thing that we are going to do guys um is to just copy this image okay copy this image and then what we are going to do in this page this one okay we are just going to paste this image okay and we are going to import it okay import um image from uh sorry about that uh from next image okay now we have this image and then in terms of the src what we want to do okay what we want to do we want to take the url let's go back here let's go back here what we can do here okay we can take this url and paste it where let's paste it here okay h1 uh, h1 let's paste the url as it is there so that we can copy it let's go back uh image url not define where okay let me go back yes it might happen it's undefined okay let me do this for now go back okay as you can see this is the image url okay uh just undo okay but it doesn't show up as i want to okay can't i copy it okay um what am i going to do then okay because i want that url as it is let me just go back okay if i want this url let me just paste it on top of this one okay on top of the link because i want to copy it yes okay this is what i want so now what i'm going to do okay i want to copy this link as it is okay let me say inspect 
good this is what i'm looking for i want to copy this okay i'm taking this to our new page okay the page that we've created okay so here i'm going to add this okay the only thing that i will remove it's this because i will get it from the url okay and then we can say plus and then we can say params the params that we got from here params dot typescript will help me to get this one okay now let's go back and test i don't need this because i was just copying it for the sake of uh, just copying the url now let's see guys let's see we are almost done okay let's paste this now as you can see we can get the full image of the selected dog okay guys we have reached the end i hope you have uh, learned a thing or two obviously um the video was a bit lengthy but it was uh worth it we have managed to go to an api hit a certain endpoint got the result and after that we displayed a list of dogs and then when you click in each and every image you were able to go to a different page to get a different image otherwise that is it for me i'm matthew singati the designer and developer if you feel like this video has added an overall value into your own understanding uh, of um next js how to fetch data from the server please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you might be interested on some sort of um video calling me asking me some certain concept i'm starting to be open uh, up for that we just need to air uh, to to arrange some time scheduling since we are staying in different places there will be some time zone factors let me know on my email it's classometheu at gmail.com you can check it on about section of my youtube channel and then from then you can let me know that maybe you want um want me to explain a certain concept uh, for you and that's it or you can just send an email and ask a certain question i will be more than willing to answer that otherwise for me matthew singati have a good one see you on the next one